So irrigation is exactly attempting to solve this problem of giving water to the fields, to the agriculture, people who are doing agriculture, whenever they need it the most. So how can we do this? So what is it? What is the main objective? To reduce the dependency on monsoons based on which like almost a good amount of our farming still depends upon the monsoon. So there are four main ways in which we irrigate. Now they are wells, canals, river lift systems and tanks. Now we'll discuss a couple of others as well but these are the main. So when you look at wells, right? If we're all familiar with wells, there are two types. There are dug wells and there are tube wells. So when you take the dug well, which is a, which is a very popular, very common kind of well, and somebody tells well, we all think of a dug well, where you dig it and then you get to the water table and then you start using that water. Now a tube well can reach deeper parts and then you use a pump to get the water out and then use that to irrigate the fields. Now that's one way of doing it. Now there are canals. Canals are very extensive, all right? So let's say you have a river or in some other form, you, you have some kind of a large reservoir. So this, you take this reservoir and from there, you build a canal and then it has its own distributaries and then finally they all go to the fields. So you begin with a large source, you're building like a network where water reaches all of these fields finally. So from reservoir to canals to little distributaries, it finally goes to the fields. Now that's one way of doing it. But the third way, let's say the, the canal system is not very efficient. It's not able to reach people. Then right, very close to the rivers, what's done is water is taken directly from these rivers. So if you have a river here, the water is directly lifted out of the rivers. And that, so that's why it's called a river lifting, river lift systems. So you take water directly from there. That's the third method. And the fourth one are tanks, where let's say there is a small catchment area where you have some, where you have some rain, and you don't want to lose that. So you build a little tank over there. You, it could be man-made. It, it sometimes there are these ponds where you hold this water. They're very small. They're not very, uh, they're not large-scale water holders. You have wells under which you have dug, dug wells and tube wells. You have canal systems. You have river lift systems, and you have tanks. Now, the interesting thing is, in the recent times, we've tried and made irrigation even better by tapping into certain other methods, one of them being rainwater harvesting. So you directly try to harvest rainwater, you try to collect it so you don't lose it out, that's one. And the other thing is called watershed, watershed management. So when you, what you do over here is that you want to make sure that the water doesn't get shed, in other words. So you, let's say there's water and it's gonna, it's gonna flow away, you wanna stop that from happening, so you build these little check dams. So watershed movement is where you build these check dams shallow ones, where water gets collected and then it seeps down. So what's what's the use of water seeping down? We're losing water? No, we're not. What it is doing is that it is replenishing the groundwater. And it's much better because otherwise if it's on top, it can get evaporated and then we have to depend on rain all over again. We don't want that. So you put this into the soil. There are many advantages to this, right? You, you cannot have mosquitoes breeding because the water is under the soil, right? It's not open to getting impure because it's again under the soil. To keep learning with such engaging videos, download Byju's, the learning app today.